So welcome to my second day of my and Sofia's tour around Portugal. After waking up not too early and having a nice healthy breakfast, we got out to a very foggy Douro River, as you can see from the pictures, but clearer and clearer by the time we got out. Uh, the plan was to ride not long enough for the bikes to warm up and visit the Penedo Durão which is what you're seeing now the Penedo Durão is an escarpment towering 500 and something meters over the Douro river and besides the amazing views over the Spanish Altiplano um, what you get is that a couple of minutes after you shut down your engines it becomes an ideal place for watching eagles and some magnificent griffin vultures. Now Sophia went to fill up her bike and um, then I was left here a while to contemplate. Um, if you visit I recommend that you show up early because this is really some. This is really somewhere that it pays to be alone and silent, and to have the place to yourself. The views, they're just incredible. You have the most amazing. You can see the most amazing distance over uh, Spain, which is right across the river, behind the bikes, right here. And it's it's really my there's no other view in Portugal quite like this. This is quite something. Now it's granted we could have had nicer weather, prettier skies, bigger skies, longer distances to to see, but uh, you get what you get. And the weather today wasn't for the best, as you'll see ahead in the video. I decided to change the camera to the left side of the bike into a lower perspective, preparing myself to what was coming ahead. As the climb down from Penedo Durão down to the National Road 221, it's something. It, it's not. It's it's not that it's a big uh, trip, um, a long ride, but it's. Just look at the views. You're, I think you're climbing. You're, you're dropping 500 meters within five minutes, and and this is what you get. Your left side, it's just a sheer drop. You get a few switched backs. It's just a lovely, lovely bit of motorcycling. Here we are coming up to the 221, which is about 30 or something, 30 or 40 best kilometers you'll find in Portugal. If you own a sports bike, this is, this is pretty much where you belong outside of a racetrack. Um, it's a great road. It's under, you can see it from this perspective, but on the left, behind the um, short armco, that's the Douro River, and it's just an amazing view. You get entrailed in the corners. It's perfect tarmac, just lovely.
So we are stopping on the bridge right before Barcadalva, which is a little town on the Douro, right before the Douro basically stops being um, a border between Portugal and Spain and heads inwards into Portugal. As you can see, the, the, the water today was, there's, there's no wind, so the water is like a mirror. It is amazing. Um, from here on out, we've got a little bit left of National Road 221. And yeah, after this, that, this we're, the landscape basically changes and we head down to the Serra da Estrela area, heading to the mountains. Uh, but before, a little bit more twisties. You can't help but being a little bit excited for this. Knowing that the twisties were about to end, uh, I'm not one to waste an, a photo opportunity and with this lovely viewpoint we stop and take a picture and say bye bye to the Toro. From here we are heading to Almeida and the landscape changes almost instantly. Almeida, um, our next destination for lunch, is arguably one of Portugal's most important fortresses ever. The construction began in 1641, which I had to look up, and it rivals the Real Fuerte de la Concepcion in Salamanca, which is on obviously the other side of the border. We rode in with a sense of adventure that you always get when you use the entrance to an historic fortress and park the bikes and have a little stroll on top of the surrounding walls. Then we found a park bench in the square to have a small snack that we brought from the hotel and they had a nice espresso Portuguese style. And then obviously good to go heading to Serra da Estrela, um, but before, here is the, well, nothing special, just a short walk on top of the walls. Yes? Super deep. This is Almeida, it's a fortress town cannons pointing to Spain. There are the bikes. And that's where we'll have our sandwich over for lunch. Bye. Eu não sei nada. Pedro, tu sabes muita coisa. Ah. E sabes escolher os sítios certos, por isso é que eu ando atrás de ti há não sei quanto tempo a angariar-te. Eu ando a angariar há mais de um ano. Há mais? Bem mais de um ano. Para fazer mototours. Estás quase rendido. Leaving Almeida, obviously I went for my plastic overall pants and uh, the clouds in the distance were frightening, so there you go. I plan to surprise Sofia with a stop in Castelo Bom, which means the good castle. This is really old, there is proof of artifacts being found here from around 1200 before Christ, like a sword from the Bronze Age late Bronze Age. It was conquered in Portugal in 1282 
decreased in expansion and then used to as a part of the Portuguese defense structure. This is a small but very charming place to visit. There's, mm, there's never, never people around. You can just ride in, park and go for a walk. It's very nice. Riding on, uh, we were going through Castelo de Sortelha, which is another castle. You, you can ride a bicycle and not get tired between castles in this area. It started pouring down, uh, which was not so nice, but we soldiered on. Um, oh, in Castelo de Sortelha, there's been people living here since 10,000 years before Christ. It was occupied by the Romans, the Visigoths, the Muslims, and the little castle inside, which is not the main fortress, was built by the Romans and was then turned into a structure also for the Portuguese border defense but in 1187. Today, as you'll see, you can ride a motorcycle through it this is one of the um, protected and very valued uh, old um, villages in Portugal. Um, you can ride a motorcycle through it today, you couldn't back then, mainly because there were no motorcycles back then. There you go. This is a very pretty town, sadly, because of, co of Covid, everything was closed, there were, there were no there was no cafe open, no bar. Sofia was in need of a typical local uh, cheese sandwich. Behind this in front is the castle. You can see it's Roman because it's built in a square, uh, not round shape. The things I know. So now riding out of the little village of Sortelha and in search for a cheese sandwich. Now I have to confess this um, rain was pretty cold and this rain, this weather, it was making me a little bit hungry. We had ridden, I don't know how many kilometers after the little snack we had in Almeida, but um, I found this uh, small typical cafe, it's like just used by locals, no tourists inside and we sat down and asked for a typical cheese sandwich. The man, in the owner in charge, was the, he didn't have any typical cheese, so he just went home and brought us some of his own. And this is just Portuguese hospitality in its best. Uh, in this case, it made me warm inside, and strong, and just happy to tackle the Serra da Estrela in the in s almost summer, but it felt like winter time. Uh, it was about seven degrees while still below, or I mean at the bottom. Uh, now starting to climb the glacier valley, which you see to your right. Um, this is an amazing road. It's around 1,000 meters in altitude right now and 2,000 in the Torre, uh, right at the top. The Torre, it's funny, it's, um, it's not really a mountain peak, 
it's more like the highest point in the mountain chain. So, there you go. Things I know. So now we're about to reach the... Almost to reaching the top of the Serra da Estrela. And it's about 4 or 5 degrees centigrade. And I'm really happy I resisted not bringing my summer jacket because it was a consideration before leaving home. Um, this is such a pretty view up here. And also, I'm about to... Just a couple of minutes before losing my... finishing my camera battery and giving my camera a proper kick now getting off the bike. So we spent a few minutes just enjoying the views, uh, enjoying the, the little snow I had to sit on top of and making a fool of myself, like a little child that never seen the white stuff. Uh, visiting the tower for the obligatory picture and then riding down to Saya in the very thick fog just before the camera dive. We did find a nice bottle of tasty red wine and a proper meal for the evening some sausage and chorizo as entrees to warm up and then some a little bit spicy octopus rice it's very nice so stick with me for the next episode of this uh, experiment of me narrating our trips so, bye bye see ya